Hello everyone and welcome to this course on modern application development. Okay, now in the last part on this section on security, we are going to look at the topic of logging, right? Now, what exactly is logging? We need to record all accesses to a particular application, right? Why do we need to do this? For multiple reasons. One is that we want to find out if there are any bugs or if there are any problems or server related errors. But we might also want just statistics, right? How many visits were there to a given site? What were the usage patterns? On which are the most popular links? On which days was the number of uh, accesses the most? And you can also do certain kinds of site optimization based on this, right? Now, how do you go about doing this logging? That can also be done at different levels, right? As an application builder, you should try and build it into the app itself and log the information that's useful to you, okay? And typically what is done over here is that you would then log it directly into a log file which you can then process later. Or there might be ways by which you can directly output to an analysis pipeline. What I mean by an analysis pipeline is some kind of software that specializes in being able to read and understand uh, what different log patterns are indicating. The logging can be done at the server level, right? It's usually built into servers, web servers such as Apache, Nginx and so on. But over here, it can only log information about which URL was being accessed, right? So what exactly was the user trying to do? What is there inside the post information? Which uh, requests were being made? That information is not even available to the server. It does not sort of store any of that in a log file. It is useful in order to sort of indicate certain kinds of security issues, especially security attacks. If you find, for example, that there are a large number of requests in a short duration, or if there are malformed URLs, right, things which are obviously not correct requests that are coming to your server, they might be attempts to try and break your server in some way, right, maybe an SQL injection or some other kind of thing which is trying to break your server. On the other hand, you as an application developer, can do your own logging, right? And the Python logging framework is something that can be used very efficiently for this. It can provide multiple different outputs. It can either write into a file or it can create so-called stream outputs which can be used in order to maybe even send information out over a network connection to a remote server if needed, okay? And in your, when you implement your own logging, you can have a lot more detailed information. You can, for example, say which controllers are being invoked, which data models, are there any requests that are sort of potential security issues, and all server errors, anything that causes the server to crash, even the stack traces could be logged, okay? And ideally should be logged so that you have a better way of sort of handling such problems. So this is an example of what a log file might look like. Right? I mean, this is just the log that comes up, for example, when I run using the flask run command on the gradebook example, right? And as soon as flask comes up, you know, it puts out some information about the server itself, but the main log information is coming out here, right? It basically, in this case, of course, it's, you know, running on my local machine and I'm accessing it locally. Therefore, this IP address is always going to be local. It gives the date and time when the access happened. It also gives the HTTP verb, the URL, the version, and the status code, right? This last one is usually something called the referrer, which, you know, if you have an internal link which goes from one to another, then you would find that something is over there, otherwise you would just find a dash. Now, the important things to look for would be as long as everything is 200, great. 304s are all right in the sense that all they indicate is that, you know, either something has not changed since the last time it was accessed or has been redirected, but it's not necessarily a problem. 404, on the other hand, is not good news. It means that, you know, somebody was trying to access something which was not there, okay? And the more such requests that you have, it's actually going to be a bit of a problem, right? You don't really want this to be something common. And, you know, as far as logs are concerned, one of the things that you need to look out for is you need to make sure that you don't have high volume logs, meaning that it doesn't fill up your disk, okay? Logs can be generated in high volumes, you know, you have a large amount of data. They're mostly being written somewhere, 
and in a lot of cases you might not be doing too much analysis you might only be looking for security what that means is you can't store it indefinitely right you need to delete the older entries and one of the things you need to do is rotation right one way of handling this would be to do log rotation that is to say you keep the last n files right delete the oldest file rename all the intermediate files and take the most recent one and rename it as a dot one file or something of that sort so that you can now create a new file it basically uses a fixed amount of space on the server and you don't run into space problems eventually in case you are using a custom application engine something like google app engine they have their own logging mechanisms right and can generate custom logs and customized reports and in a lot of cases can also do automated security analysis and in case you do plan to run on some kind of a framework like that you should definitely make use of those facilities one thing you can notice from all of this logging information is that what you are actually looking at is time series analysis right because one of the most important kinds of patterns that you look for is is there any specific time of day or some other thing which indicates either a problem or you know you know that there are a large number of uh, requests coming in at a certain time maybe an exam was uh, opened up right and how is the server performing under those conditions okay so you have time series data the every uh, piece of information has a timestamp associated with it which means that certain kinds of databases like rrd tool or influx db are probably the best way to store and analyze such information so to summarize having good security is the key to having a successful application right you cannot afford to have security problems because it will definitely impact how you are going to work implementing good security does require a good understanding of principles of various things such as cryptography and also something about you know sql and operating system level vulnerabilities you don't need to be an expert but you at least need to be aware of the concepts over there in general one relatively safe option is to always go with good known frameworks right and ultimately there is no replacement for you know constantly analyzing your logs and data right identifying problems and then going about fixing them